All right, everybody. I apologize for the delayed start. For those of you watching online, I apologize that we had a little bit of dead air as we begin. We try to start right at 4.30. I just had a couple of um, things that threw me off my schedule. I apologize. Um, but we're ready to get it rolling here. Um, welcome. Tonight is July 19th, 2023. As we begin our Wednesday night Bible study here at Malden First Baptist, we're going to be studying in the Psalms. So we invite you to take your copy of God's Word and to turn to Psalms chapter 5. We're going to look at um, briefly some other Psalms, 21, 91, and 102. We passed out some notes. Hopefully everybody had a chance to get some of the Bible study notes that are available if you would like to follow along, as well as our prayer list. We'll do our prayer, or excuse me, our Bible study first, and then we will conclude with our prayer time. So hopefully everyone here has gotten that. And for those of you watching with us online, if you'd like for us to email you our notes or the prayer list, or if you would like to have something added to the prayer list, then you can email those to me as well. You can see my email address on the screen, and then we can check our list here and see if there's anything that you would like to add, and we certainly want you to be included as well. Tonight, as you can see from the title of the notes, that we're going to be talking about the type of psalms that are intercession and supplication. Um, fancy words for prayer, but they are particular types of prayer, and certainly many of the psalms are prayers. We talked about this during the introduction that some people want to be very specific and say, well, this is a song, where this one's a prayer, this one's a poem, this one is a lament. And my thought would be, well, does it really matter? In other words, does it have to be only one category? Can it be two or three or all? They can certainly have a lot of overlap here. And I th think you could certainly make that case when it comes to prayer. Many of the things that are offered in the Psalms can be certainly listed as a prayer, but it can be a song, uh, another type of petition, or act of worship as well. Um, I think we separate those too often when there tends to be more overlap than we would think. But we're going to look at some particular um, aspects of intercession and application, or supplication in these Psalms tonight that may not just be hopefully useful for you in understanding the Psalms, but even in your own times of prayer. Um, I think one of the good things about reading through the Psalms is that sometimes it may remind you that there are certain things that you're not doing. And I don't mean that to mean that God's checking your boxes like, up. Oh, you know, he gave praise, but he didn't, you know, do this or that or whatever. It's just more about having a complete relationship with God. Um, a love relationship or a close, intimate relationship with anybody shouldn't just be asking for things only. It shouldn't just be affection and praise only. It shouldn't just be um, sharing pain and struggles only. Um, but all relationships, closeness, you know, have a mix of those types of things. But I think sometimes we might find ourselves leaning toward one or two more than the other. And so I hope that tonight as you look through this, some of this may be parts where you say, I haven't really done that in my relationship and my prayer time with God lately. And that'd be encouraging. So don't look at it as a negative, just more so I'm missing out or my relationship isn't as rich and complete as it could be um, in looking at this. So I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to you in this. Um, you'll see in the opening paragraph there in the New Testament, the requests we make to God seem to have more of an emphasis on the human motivation behind our requests. But in the Psalms, we see a greater emphasis on God's motivation for responding to and answering our prayers. We also see in the Psalms that God expects, that's your first blank, by the way, expects us to ask him for what we need and that we should do this on a regular basis, that's your next blank, and be bold in asking. So those are your first three fill-in-the-blanks there for the opening paragraph. But let me read to you from Psalm chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. You are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies, bloodthirsty and deceitful men the Lord abhors. But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house in reverence while I bow down towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave with their tongue. They speak deceit. 
Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be fall um, be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor, as with a shield. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. In this short psalm here, I think we see five examples of why David was a man that God could use. And these can be things that we should look for in our own prayer life as well. Number one, David was contrite. Okay? Contrite. David begins his days with prayer. That's certainly good to fill in there. But not just asking for things, but humbling himself before the Lord. In other words, how often do you and I think about, okay, before I pray to God, before I come up with my list or the words I want to say, what's my heart like? What's my spirit, my attitude? Am I even approaching him in the right way? Um, This may be a psalm written by King David, but notice in verse 2 that David calls God his king. Write that down. There is no question that David and the other psalmists see God as as the divine ruler who alone has the ability to deliver his people and fulfill their requests. Again, we don't see David coming in power, but in humility, being contrite. Closely related to that, number two, David expressed conviction. Okay, Conviction. One of the most overwhelming aspects of God to David is that God is holy. That's your next blank, holy. It is a big deal to come into his presence. I emphasize that because... Do we still feel it's a big deal to come in God's presence? That when we pray to have an audience with the Almighty, are we humbled by that? Do we feel conviction? Do we recognize that we're not worthy of that? Um, And David counts on God to deal with evil. That's your next blank. And to practice justice. A quick word about that evil idea. Again, he's the king of Israel. Some would say that he's the ultimate source of, you know, establishing justice and confronting evil. But I think David knows what a lot of our leaders today won't acknowledge, and that is that there's limits to what they can do in confronting evil. For example, you know, God, if somebody did something horrible to you or your family, God forbid, let's pray that doesn't happen. You know, a police officer, um, the governor, maybe even the Supreme Court, you know, could issue punishments, rulings, and things like that. But can they set the scales right? Can they, you know, make all things as they should be? No. No system of justice and no person who administers justice can truly deal with evil. So that's why you see, at least I believe, when David speaks of God confronting the evil, he's saying this in a way, only you can do this, God. I may be the king, but I can't make all things right. And he's not supposed to. He's not set for that. Um, Number three. David acknowledges his need to be consecrated. That's your next blank. David needs to be consecrated. Not a word we use often, okay? But again, David knows that in and of himself, he cannot make himself righteous or worthy. While he loves the Lord, David knows he needs to be led. That's your next blank. Needs to be led into righteousness. That's another act of humility there. David hates evil, but knows that in his flesh, he is evil too and that he only comes into God's house by God's mercy. That's your next blank. Only by God's mercy can he come into that relationship in his presence. And then number four, David condemns his enemies. Okay, Often in Psalms, the tongue, that's your next blank, is seen as one of the most powerful weapons of destruction and reveals what is in the heart. You see this also in Matthew chapter five, uh, 15. David even cries out for justice, that's your next blank, primarily because of their sin against God, not out of his own hatred for what they have done to him. Let me pause there a minute. Now, the Bible says, even Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So does that mean David is wrong for crying out for his enemies to be condemned? Is that a conflict there, do you think? Is it a problem? Yeah, he's sharing how he feels, okay? And he wants justice and for evildoers to be put in their places. And again, not just for his own revenge. That's not really what you're hearing 
but for God's justice to be established, for things to be right, for things to be as they should. And again, only God can do that. Why am I emphasizing this? I don't think it's wrong for us to pray that God would judge our enemies. If you see those in your life or in culture or whatever that are going against God's word, should we pray that God would, you know, again, condemn them and practice justice? Yes. But if your motivation for that is your own personal revenge or you take some joy out of seeing people suffering, then you've got the wrong idea. But if you see evil going on within your own circles or in the world, and you, God, set things right. God, make things the way they should be. God, don't let this evil go unchecked. Those are good and righteous prayers, just as long as you're not the one seeing yourself as righteous. Got it? So it's not wrong to pray that your enemies or enemies of God would be condemned because you want the evil to stop and, and no more influence or spread of it. That's the idea here. Number five, David celebrates with God. Do you still celebrate in your prayers? you probably got a long list of things that are tough and difficult and need to be dealt with, of course. But do you take time in your time with God to celebrate? David sees that gladness and joy come as a result of taking refuge, that's your next blank, in God. David also sees his victory coming from the Lord, not his armies. God gave them the victory. Whether he had 10 soldiers or 10,000 soldiers, didn't matter. God gave them the victory, so God is the one to be declared and to praise and worship and celebrated because of God answering prayer. So those are just a few things that you can take from Psalm 5 that can be really helpful. Um, I won't have the time tonight to read Psalm 21, but I'm going to make some references here so you can follow along the notes. Um, some believe that Psalm 20 was actually the beginning of Psalm 21. Um, Psalm 20 is the hope that God will answer you when you need him. But what Psalm 21 is a good example for us to look at when it comes to intercession and supplication because Psalm 21 is the celebration after God has answered and delivered you. Okay, Like all Old Testament kings, David fought in many battles and had many confrontations with his enemies. But we see in verse 2 that before the battle, David prayed and asked for God to help him. Now comes what we just talked about, the joy, that's your next blank, and in the celebration, David acknowledges that it was God who gave him the victory and did not withhold the request of his lips. Write that down, the request of his lips. Another great thing about Psalm 21 is that it almost sounds like the depiction of a victory parade. That's your next blank. It's a parade. It's a public celebration of God and his victory, his power over evil. And this is where the celebration of joy after the battle is won but David sees God as the one to be honored, not himself. If we were to put it in today's terms, we might say God would be the grand marshal, not David. Okay? And again, note the asking in verse 4 that David asked for life and God gave it. God responds to that. And in verses 8 through 12, David already begins to pray for future battles. Write that down. Future battles that he knows will inevitably come. And he fully trusts in the Lord to turn them away, no matter what evil they plot. Let me take just a moment here to emphasize this idea. In fact, I think I can, I'll at least read 8 through 12 of Psalm 21, so that we can kind of get this idea, because it's an important idea for our prayers. Listen to this. Again, future tense. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. At the time of your appearing... You will make them like a fiery furnace. In his wrath, the Lord will swallow them up, and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot um, succeed. For you will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Now, why is this important to give God praise and confidence in future battles? Okay, we know they're going to come, but think about when we are, let's just use this word or idea, threatened with battle or someone overtaking us. It could be a sickness. It could be a military battle, um, certainly what David's referencing here, but any kind of affliction or pain or torment or whatever that would come upon you, usually in the moment, our focus is on what? The pain, the enemy, the affliction, the torment. How strong is it? How overwhelming is it? What can I do? Those kind of things. 
notice oftentimes in the moment our focus isn't on God and who he is and what he will do. In a way, this is David getting prepared so that he won't be overwhelmed by any of the circumstances of the future battle. He's already declaring God's victory because God already has power over those things. What does this mean for you and me? Do we pray in that regard? Lord, I'm already praising you and I know that you will have the victory when I can no longer drive. When I can no longer earn an income. When things in my community fall apart. When politics get even worse. I don't know how that's possible, but... um, but, I mean, but again, for the future things that are coming that I could find overwhelming or devastating, God, I'm praying to you in the future, already declaring that you will have power and victory. Those things will not overcome you. If I were New Testament version of this, I would say, Lord, I thank you that you have promised us that you said that in this world we will have trouble. But I am taking heart, for you have overcome the world. It's already happened, even in the future. It's already taken care of. This gives us confidence and prepares us So that when future battles or temptations come, it won't overwhelm us. Why? Because we've already put our faith in the Lord and already have that perspective that he's going to be in charge, which he already is, and that can give us confidence. Hope that can help. But rarely do you hear people praying about future battles. So that's why I think Psalm 21 is a good one for that. All right, let's take a peek at Psalm 91. A couple of ideas that we can get here from this psalm, okay? The main idea of Psalm 91 is that the psalmist sees God as a shelter. Write that down. You can use refuge as well. But again, verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, fortress. All those words apply. Shelter, refuge, and fortress. In Old Testament times, people often saw the temple as that safe place to hide. You may remember some of these references, even clinging to the hordes of the altar. For safety. You can read about that in 1 Kings 1 and 2, that when people did something evil and they were, knew the just punishment was coming, they'd run to the temple and hold on, like, you know, you can't touch me here, you know, no one can take me. But that certainly didn't happen. Um, but in the Psalms, the Lord himself is that safe place, okay? Psalm 91, along with 5 and 21, speak of God as a covering. Write that down in the blank. God as a covering. The idea is that those who run to the Lord will be surrounded by his protection. See that in verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. So again, we see in verse 4, the metaphor is to find covering under his wings. So you can write that down. That's repeated in many psalms. But also, listen to this in verses 11 and 12. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Okay, so the psalmist counts on angels to guard us. Okay? And if that sounds familiar, that's because even Satan, write that down, quotes this when speaking with Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 5 during the temptation. So again, the angels being a part of God's shelter and refuge and covering. In verse 13, the psalmist has confidence that the Lord and his angels will bear him up against the lion, the cobra, and the serpent. So we see some of those examples. So it's good to have these thoughts. What are the threats that we face today? And can we have confidence? Remember, our confidence is in the Lord, not our understanding of how the Lord will defeat those things, not our belief in our own resources or power, not based on comparison with others, any of those kind of things, having complete confidence in the Lord. And again, a divine, supernatural power beyond the power of this world. That's what's important to place our confidence in. And then listen to verses 14 through 16. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Okay? So again, these are great verses to read for yourself and to share with others who are facing painful circumstances that seem to have no end or explanation. Because again, there's the certainty of that. You know, 
I will rescue him. I will protect him. I will be with him in troubles. I will deliver him and honor him. Even the most faithful among us in the midst of pain or in the midst of something overwhelming that we weren't expecting or didn't see coming can begin to lose heart, begin to lose faith, and feel like we're alone and on our own. So it's important to remind each other of these things. Because right now, I know we all believe this and acknowledge this, but these are good verses to share with someone who's very faithful, but maybe in the midst of trial or suffering because Satan makes us feel alone in those times. So it's good to reaffirm these things. Be ready to share them with others. Okay, last psalm for tonight is just an example of Psalm chapter um, 102. Um, This seems to be a unique psalm here. The author is depicted in the subheading as an afflicted man. Write that down. Here's the way it's written in my Bible. A prayer of an afflicted man when he is faint and pours out his lament before the Lord. Okay? Let me read it to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let me cry out for help, or let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me. When I call, answer me quickly. For my days vanish like smoke. My bones burn like glowing embers. My heart is blighted and withered like grass. I forget to eat my food. Because of my loud groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like a desert owl, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake. I have become like a bird alone on a roof. All day long, my enemies taunt me. For those who rail against me use my name as a curse. For I eat ashes as my food and mingle my drink with tears. Because of your great wrath, for you have taken up, uh, um, taken me up and thrown me aside. My days are like the evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory, for the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion, his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples and the kingdoms assemble to worship the Lord. In the, curse, in the course of my life, he broke my strength. He cut short my days. So I said, do not take me away, O my God. In the midst of my days, your years go on through all generations. In the beginning, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But you remain the same, and your years will never end children of your servants will live in your presence. The descendants, Their descendants will be established before you. Here's some good things about prayer that I find in this psalm that we can, I think, take some encouragement from. Um, we already talked about being this, from an afflicted man, but it begins as the prayer of an individual, but closes by speaking of the nation. That's your next blank. Starts off with an individual prayer. That's probably how most of our prayers start, right? But how often do they move to others? even others that we do not know, even future generations like it talks about. That's a healthy way for our our prayers, even of pain, to progress. Yes, Lord, here's where I am. Here's where I'm struggling. But I trust in you. And I know that others are facing this and suffering as well. So I'm praying for them. And I'm praying for others who will come. Um, But note the beginning of the psalm and how personal, that's your next blank, how personal this is. And this is why I think this is so important to emphasize. This person is not praying to some unknown force. He's praying to the person of God. So again, we talked about refuge and strength. But it's more than just a power. God's a person. God's his father. Okay? He's praying to the person of God that he and he alone can protect him and deliver him and save him. 
This person is also not afraid to share his pain. That's your next blank, with God. He's very open about his pain. I think it's very important that we're honest before God, and when we're bitter, when we don't like the hand that we've been dealt or whatever it is that we're dealing with in the midst of our pain, is to pour that out before God so that we can leave it there. And then this next part, you know, again, note this is important. This person is not afraid to share his pain with God, but notice how even in his pain he gives praise to God. Can we and do we practice in our prayers you know, the prayers of Job that says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That it be more than just poetic, that it be a true decision. Lord, even in my pain, I trust you, and I look to you. My, my faith is not wavering. I'm continuing to look to you, Lord. I am afflicted, I am struggling, I'm in trouble, but I'm looking to you and to you alone, God. I continue to cry out to you, and you will be my salvation as you have been before. That type of honest prayer that moves from pain to praise. He trusts in the Lord even while his prayer remains unanswered. Another important part of our prayer life, do we praise only when we get the answer, only when we get the revelation, only when it makes sense? Or can we praise God even when our prayer remains unanswered? God, I'm praying for an answer, a, a response, a change, whatever this might be. And it's been a week, it's been a month, it's been a decade. Yeah, but can we continue to praise him and trust him even when we don't have that answer yet? And then in verse 23, he acknowledged that even when the Lord broke my strength, that that too comes from God. That this didn't drive him away from God, it drove him back to God. He closes the psalm by asking the Lord for what he needs and trusting the Lord's power. And this is another important part, continue to look to God and his unchangeable, that's your last blank unchangeable nature. I think it's so important to recognize God as unchangeable because so much changes in our lives and in our culture and so many things move back and forth and it's overwhelming to all of us. But God's not like that. God's above all that. God's beyond all those things. And that should give us confidence to look to Him as, again, that fortress, that rock, that steadiness that can only come from Him. I went fast. Anybody miss anything? Anything I can help you with? Let me know afterward, and I've been putting a few copies of the answer sheets there, so in case you're taking one to somebody or you missed one, feel free to take a look at that. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, the first one was shelter, okay? And then the second one is in Old Testament times, um, people often saw the temple as a safe place, even clinging to the horns of the altar. The altar for safety. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Okay. Which one? Oh, some of them need, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, especially a couple of those last ones, unanswered and unchangeable. There you go. We'll try to make them a little bit bigger. That we can do. Sir, <laughs> you're exactly right. All right. Well, thank you all for, again, rolling with me, and sorry we started a little bit late. I will definitely not try to make that a habit. Okay. Let's move to our prayer list here. Let's see, I just got a text. No, I don't want to give to this person's campaign, but thanks for asking. Are y'all fooled by those things too? Like personal, like, hey, you know, we need your help, and then it's that. So. All righty. Just double checking this part too. Nothing yet. All right. Let me grab the calendar. And let's see here. A couple to write down. Yeah, we got that there too. Okay. Let me go ahead and give you a couple to write down, and then we're going to walk through the list, and of course, we'll see if you have some others that you want to add. Um, Kathy Mudre has gone back into the hospital. Um, really, an hour before we started, they were at the water park with the grandchildren, um, or I, I should say Gary was, and Kathy had to go to T-Mobile for a phone issue, but had an episode there, so they had to call EMS. They took her from the hospital to, um, from T-Mobile to um, the hospital from there by the ambulance. So I don't know all the details yet. I was kind of hoping Heisen had texted me an update. 
and everything. So, um, Hyson and Kathy, we know that y'all watch when you can. So, if you're connecting with us, Kathy, we are praying for you. Um, let's also um, be praying for John Center. Um, John's been having some dizzy spells and um, getting ready to have some doctor visits to know the next strategies about what's to take place. A um, few options are on the table. So um, we want to make sure that we lift up our brother John. Lavon, anything else you want to add to this? I know John can speak for himself, but um, just, okay, good. Well, John, we're lifting you up, sir. We'll be praying for you. Um, let's walk through the list here, and let's um, see if there's some others to add later. Barbara Ramsey in need of a kidney transplant. Um, Bill and Charlotte asking for prayers for their daughter, Carrie, but glad she's doing well. Any updates? Okay, we'll keep praying. Um, Bill Roche, Randy's friend. Um, Bonnie, I don't believe Bonnie is here tonight. So, Bonnie, if you're watching, we're praying for you. Um, pardon me? Yeah, I didn't notice her Sunday either, but we want to keep praying for her daughter and for um, Bonnie. So, yes, ma'am. That's right. Daughter had back surgery Monday. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, Gary Mudre continues to have cataract issues. Plus, I talked to him today. He's having some arthritis issues still. That's an ongoing thing and with his hands. And as you know, Gary's a piano teacher, so that's a big issue there. He's trying to really pray for discernment on what they may do next to help him with that. You know how sometimes you pray, well, this might fix things and make the pain better, but limit the movement. Which do you go with? Those are big decisions. So prayers for Gary. Also prayers for Chuck Wilder and his continued recovery. Colton and Shelby Woodside for little Renly. Continue to pray for that little miracle. She, yeah, she's over three pounds. Isn't that great? So, yep, she's doing better because she was right out of pounds. So she's doing better. Um, continuing prayers for Connor. Um, so far he's doing better. We, you know, things went well, so we're glad of that. Um, Danny Shavos, we've been praying for Danny and Shingles. David Martinez um, had his hernia surgery and is doing okay. Um, Deborah Martin, this is Paula's mom, the loss of her husband, Roy. Earl Bradham, Estelle Davis. Um, Jean Betha, I, this is a new one to me, recently diagnosed with cancer and multiple health issues. So this is Pam Lawless's friend. So let's remember them. Okay, thank you, sir. Goldie Harper, um, difficulties with um, enduring the heat. And her daughter, Sharon, that's Sharon Harper, has stage 4 cancer. I spoke with Sharon this week, and she is very grateful for our prayers. So let's keep praying there. Um, Heidi and Eric Lorenz, um, the loss of their daughter, Emily. Um, Hyson Lewis, as she's dealing with her family, but her own sinus infection. But also praying for David and Christian. Let's lift them up. John Beeson, continuing for back and neck pain. Johnny Metters, you see some updates there. Any other thing? We're going to keep praying. We're so glad he's doing better. Um, Joseph Ayers, um, diagnosed with kidney disease, neighbor of Bill Voorhees. By the way, y'all may know this. Bill's on vacation this week, okay? Don't call him, okay? Call Howie. Here's his number. No, I was kidding. Um, you can call Howie or me or whoever and everything, so... But no, let, let Bill have some rest this week. So he's on vacation. But yeah, we're praying for his neighbor. Um, Joy Patterson, continue prayers for Joy. Um, also for Kyle Schaefer. Um, by the way, I, I should have caught this. I'm sorry I didn't catch the last edit. Kyle is back from his mission trip, and it went well. So he is back from South Asia. Um, I told him his punishment is going to be for not telling me that he has to give a report in church. So... Don't know when that's going to happen yet, but I want him to share with us about what happened, so we're proud of him. Um, Lainey Harkleroad, okay, um, Aaron and um, Ashley's daughter. Larry Childers, continue prayers for Kayla and Brandon. Any updates there, Larry? Still married. We'll keep it going. Well, you let us know. I mean, but nothing wrong with praying for a young couple as they get started. Um, Larry and Beth Mabry, okay, continuing prayers for both their health issues. Uh, Marcy's asking that we pray for her sister, Nancy. Uh, Mike Rapp, um, currently um, home and no blockages. This is Linda's husband. Um, Natalie Crombie. Um, Pat Atkins. We have heard some news and some things with Pat um, dealing with some issues there. This is list COVID and COPD, but 
She's doing better. Ann, do you have any other updates you want to share? Elizabeth, you'd be better with it. Like, yeah. If you didn't hear the last part, um, Pat is, you know, doing better. But she is in rehab. She's in Azalea 4 at Brushy Creek and Greer. So we're glad she's doing better. Lots of prayers there. Um, Phyllis Bobo, continue prayers for Phyllis. Also for Reuben Babb. Um, Riley Faith. Any updates um, on Riley Jones? Okay. All right. We'll pray for Riley tonight. Savannah Wells, young girl dealing with um, seizures. Scott and Brittany, um, I, again, this was one that I missed. The baby has arrived and is doing well. So praying for the new baby there for Scott and Brittany. Um, most of you have probably heard the news about Barbara Hopkins' son. Um, since last prayer meeting, he has been transferred to MUSC, and he is awaiting a heart transplant. Still a lot of factors related to this. I spoke with Barbara and she said that one of the things they're trying to do, remember that port, or excuse me, that pump that they put in, it's not designed to be permanent, it was just meant to help, but they're trying to put a pump in that would do the job until he gets the transplant. So who knows how long that will take. It's not a great option, but it's their best option right now. So let's be praying for Steve and for Barbara and the family. Um, a praise on that note, though, um, some housing options have opened up for Steve and for family members in the area because they have to stay nearby. You know, you got to be ready when they call and you can't just run from here to there very quickly. So, but um, Barbara and I talked some about that, about some of the housing options that have emerged, and that's an answer to prayer. So that's a good thing. Um, Sue Perkins, um, update here with a herniated disc in her back and pinched nerves. So we want to pray for Sue. So we hope you're watching with us tonight. We're praying for you. Um, Tiffany Carrera has gone back in the hospital. Let's pray for her. Um, Vonnie Allman, continuing prayers there. Um, Wanda Blanton, Carol's sister-in-law, continue prayers for her. We're on the back page now. Continue prayers for Bob Brown, for Callie Weatherford. Um, gave you an update earlier about Kathy. Um, Connie Page, Ed Gregory, Francis Harkins, Larry and Kay Cox, Lauren Bloom. Lenore Childress, Nancy Beck, Nancy Eskridge, Phyllis Henry, Sally Parker, Steve Larsh and his family, and for Wayne Malone, okay? Praises for our visitors. Had um, three good conversations with visitors just this past Sunday. And then you see our missionaries and our church needs listed there, okay? Other prayer requests that you would like to offer tonight. Jim? Yeah, that's right. Froling Thomas had an accident on Sunday. So let's pray for her recovery. Yes, sir. Yeah, bless her heart. Yeah, I'm glad you remember Froling. Thank you. Froling Thomas. Okay, others. Lavona? Yeah, Lauren Bloom is the daughter of um, Donnie and Teresa Coggins. Um, she's had a recent diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Um, it's the type that's treatable, you know, and it's just a life change. I say just. It's a major life change, but, you know, she can learn to live with it. So that's part of why we've been praying for her. But, yes, daughter of Donnie and Teresa Coggins. Yep, grew up here. John, did I see a hand? Yes, sir. Okay, and who is Albert Goldsmith? Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a small group leader in the city of Florida. Okay. He's still in Florida. Oh, is that right? Okay, well, I'm glad he did. I'll have to make that reconnection again. You'll have to help me with that. So, well, let's pray for him. Al, Albert Goldsmith, dealing with the colon bleeding. Okay? Others? And? Mm-hmm. Mm 
Pardon? So, Ann shared two things with us. A praise that she had a good visit with her son when they were able to be in town for a while. So, glad that y'all could have that, you know, good quality time together. That's important. But prayers for her daughter, Tina, who's continuing to deal with migraines as she's undergoing chemo. So, let's remember Tina tonight. Thank you. Others. Let me add one more name um, to your list, Robert Carnell, okay? Robert Carnell is the pastor at Floyd's Creek Baptist in Rutherfordton, or near Rutherfordton, um, North Carolina, but he's also soon going to be my next-door neighbor. He's doing, I think, a very slow retirement plan, but they bought the house across the street from us. And so, anyway, so he's down some back and forth or whatnot. But Robert um, had an episode of diverticulitis and had to be in the hospital for a few days. He's going to recover. Um, it's never fun to go through that type of stuff. But it also, he was getting ready to go to Honduras on a mission trip, and that's going to have to be delayed. So pray for Robert and his wife, Angela. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Charlotte. Okay, do you know his name? Mike. Mike is the one who passed away. Okay, so if you can't hear, so you can write this down. We're praying for the family of Mike Trill, T-R-I-L-L. Okay, the family of Mike Trill. Mike um, was a police officer in Florida who died of a stroke at the age of 53. Um, his surviving brother is Matt, who's a friend of Bill and Charlotte Bales, who's a pastor there in Florida. Cool. Also had a six-year-old daughter. Okay. We'll pray for the Trill family. Sure will. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, gang, let's go ahead and bow our heads and uh, enter into a time of prayer. Father, at this time as we come into your presence, as we often do on Wednesday nights and at other times, we can use a whole lot of words and focus a lot on ourselves. But I pray that I would, that would not take away from our focus on you as the almighty, infinite, unchangeable God. While we come to you, Lord, you know all things, you hold all power, you make all things right, you will set all things right, you will destroy evil. In heaven and eternity, there will be no such thing as sin or struggle or pain or problems. That's why we look to you, Lord, because only you are above all these things. Only you can make all things right. And you have power, compassion, intimate knowledge and love for everyone that we're praying about tonight. Once again, Lord, our intent is not to inform you of anything, but just to plead with you, bringing loved ones at your feet, asking for you to minister and just to be you and to care for them. It's in the spirit that we pray for our brother John Center. Praying, Lord, that you'll be with him and his doctors and with Lavona as she takes care of him to help with these issues. And I pray, God, that you'll guide them and give them wisdom as to what the next steps would be, but to trust you all through it. We lift up our sister Kathy Mudre. She's back at the hospital once again. Pray that you'll give the doctors wisdom and skill as well as patience to treat her with her complex issues. 
give Kathy not only healing, but also strength and perseverance. And I pray the same for Hyson and Gary and the whole family. We pray for Gary as he's making big decisions about what to do with his arthritis and the path going forward. So we pray for wisdom there and praying for his cataract procedures coming up next month, praying that this will bring him the healing and the clarity that he needs. We lift up our sister, Fraulein Thomas, and thank the Lord that you spared her in this accident, praying for her full recovery. For Al Albert Goldsmith, Lord, thank the Lord that he's getting the attention that he needs, but we're praying, Lord, that you would look on him with compassion and give him healing in his colon. We lift up our sister, Tina. We know that she's per, you know, just persevering through this chemo and dealing with migraines, so we're praying for healing for Tina, praying for strength. We also pray for Robert Carnell. Thankful, Lord, that things could have been worse and you spared him. Pray, Lord, that you'll give him a full recovery from this, but also just give him strength and wisdom regarding the mission trip. So I pray that you'll be with his wife, Angela. She takes care of him. Lord, we also want to take this time to remember the Trill family in this sudden and devastating loss. Pray for their little girl. She's going to grow up without her daddy. It's an awful thing, but you're a great God, and we know that we can call on you. I pray for Pastor Matt as he ministers to his family and his church. Pray that you give them strength through it all. Lord, we pray for Barbara Ramsey. Pray, God, that your healing would come through a transplant or your spoken word. We also lift up Carrie, the Bales' daughter, thankful, praising you for progress, and she's doing better. We continue to ask that you watch over her and care for her. We pray for Bill Roche as he prepares for these surgeries. I pray for Randy as he ministers to Bill and also his wife, Nancy. We lift up our sister, Bonnie Ham. We know that she's been fighting a lot of pain and health issues, so we pray for healing and strength for her, but also for Michelle as she recovers from this surgery. Thankful she could have it. Lord, we're praying that she could be freed from her pain. We lift up our brother Chuck Wilder. Thankful for Chuck and thankful, Lord, that he's making progress, even though healing from a femur is slow progress. We pray for brother Chuck and his healing, but also his spirit and strength, and for Allison and the family as they take care of him. Lord, we lift up Colton Woodside and Shelby Woodside and their little girl Renly, continuing to Thank you, Lord, for this miracle. Pray, Lord, that you'll continue to watch over this child of yours. Give her full recovery, and we just praise you in advance for the day she can leave Nikki. We continue to lift up Connor and pray for healing and thankful for his recent surgery and recovery. Danny Shavos, we're praying for Danny. God, I just pray that you would bless him and heal him. David Martinez, thankful that he could have this procedure. Pray for him and his wife as they deal with this together. We continue to pray for our sister, uh, Deborah Martin, in the loss of her husband. We pray for Paula and Joe as they take care of her. One thing we didn't mention this week is that Paula and Joe's daughter, Lucy, is getting married this week. And so we pray for them and her husband and that new beginning. And we pray for all of them and all the family challenges that they face right now. Pray for Earl Bradham, Lord. Praying for his healing, that he would be free from cancer. We're praying for Linda's daughter, Estelle, for this upcoming procedure that she's going to have. I know there's other challenges. So I pray for Estelle, and I pray for Linda tonight. I also pray for Jean. We're praying for Pam's friend who's been diagnosed with cancer and other problems. Lord, please look on Jean with compassion. Take care of them. We also pray for Goldie Harper and her daughter, Sharon. We know struggling, you know, Goldie's struggling with heat issues, and Sharon is dealing with this cancer, and it, it's beyond what the doctors can do, but it's not beyond you, Lord. But I pray for physical healing, but also pray for spiritual strength and encouragement for both of them. We lift up Heidi and Eric Lorenz and the loss of their daughter, Emily. We pray for comfort. We also continue to pray for not only Hyson and her sickness, but also for David and Christian. Please, God, continue to care for them and protect them from themselves and watch over them. We lift up our brother, John Beeson, and pray for healing. Pray for Carmen and James as they take care of him. We also pray for Johnny Metters. God, thank you for answer prayers. Thank you for progress. Please continue to be with him. We also pray that you'll be with Bill's neighbor, Joseph Ayers, 
dealing with kidney disease. We're asking for intervention and healing. We pray now for our sister Joy Patterson, asking God that you comfort her in her body, but also in her spirit. We thank you for Joy. We also thank you for Kyle Schaefer saying yes to a mission trip. Pray for David and Betsy's son and their family, and pray that you guide Kyle and also their son Tyler and watch over them. We pray for Lainey Harkleroad. Thankful for this little girl and know that she's got a lot of complications. We pray for Ashley and Aaron, that they will have the strength and the resources to take care of her. Lord, we continue to pray for Kayla and Brandon um, as they begin their lives together. May they continue to trust in you. We know they're going to face trials. We just pray, Lord, that they'll know they're not facing them alone, that you will be with them through it. And I pray that their marriage will give you glory. Pray for Larry and Beth Mabry as they're dealing with uh, several health issues. Please comfort and strengthen them tonight. We also pray for Marcy's sister Nancy. We're asking God that you watch over Marcy and her sister Nancy and also for her husband Wayne. We're continuing to lift Wayne up to you. Lord, we thank you that Mike Rapp is now home and no more blockages. Pray, God, that you be with Linda as she takes care of him. And we continue to pray for Natalie Crombie, this young woman battling kidney failure. Please continue to bless her, Lord. We pray for our sister, Pat Atkins, and we give you praise that she is better, that things could have been so much worse, Lord. I, I just humbly thank you that COVID didn't take her and that she's in rehab doing better, so we're praying for her recovery. Praying for Phyllis Bobo, Lord. Many challenges there, so we lift up our sister Phyllis, also our brother Reuben Babb. Thankful for Reuben, praying for his healing and for Brenda. We lift up Riley Faith, Lord. We've heard the news about this young girl with cancer. God, again, we trust in you through it all, no matter what, Lord. And I pray that Riley and her family and those close to her will feel your presence and look to you. We pray for Savannah Wells, Lord. We continue to pray for healing and deliverance from these seizures, to be with Chip and Becky as they take care of her. And we give you praise for Scott and Brittany and the delivery of their child. So thankful, Lord, that... Um, Everyone's healthy, and we just pray for a, a great beginning. And, Lord, we turn our hearts now to Barbara Hopkins and her son, Steve. We pray for Steve, Lord. The situation is grim, and he needs a new heart. So, Lord, I pray that you would provide in only the way that you can. I pray that you'll help him to become healthy and stable enough to endure this time and that he would receive healing. We pray for Barbara. She and other family members are making these major adjustments to take care of them, strengthen them, and encourage them tonight. We lift up our sister, Sue Perkins. So thankful you've added her to our family. She's struggling with this pain in her back and these nerves. And so, Lord, please bless our sister, Sue. Also be with Tiffany Carrera. Just look on her with compassion and give her healing. We lift up Vani and ask for her continued healing, Lord, and for Jim and Tori as they help her. We lift up Wanda Blanton, Lord. Thankful, Lord, that she's home. But, Lord, we know she's dealing with many challenges. So, Lord, please bless Wanda and watch over her. We continue to lift up Bob Brown. We thank you for Bob and Doris. And ask God that you bless them and encourage them tonight. For Callie Weatherford, we're continuing to ask him prayers for intervention for that family and this child. We pray for Connie Page, Lord. We're thankful for Connie, asking that you minister to her and her struggles and her family issues. Pray for our brother Ed Gregory tonight. We thank you for Ed and pray for his recovery through this hip pain. And we pray for our sister Frances Harkins. Pray that you would encourage her. She struggles so mightily in her vision and has other challenges. Please bless Frances tonight. We also ask your prayers and blessings for Larry and Kay Cox, asking that you would minister to them in their household. For Lauren Bloom, as she adjusts to MS. Pray for Donnie and Teresa as they take care of her. Also for Lenora Childress, we're thankful for Lenora and her sweet spirit, praying that you would encourage and strengthen her and to be with all the family members as they take care of her. We pray for Nancy Beck. Now she's pushing through and struggling, so we're praying for her. Also for Nancy Eskridge, we know Randy's taking care of her. Bless them tonight, Lord. Lift up our sister Phyllis Henry. Now she is struggling right now, so we pray for Phyllis. We also pray for Sally and Bob Parker. I ask God that you minister to them. And for our brother Steve Larsh, dealing with these low potassium levels and heart issues, please be with Steve and June and their family tonight. We're also praying for Wayne Malone's eye issues. Thankful he's doing better, but I know that Marcy's doing her best to take care of him. So we praise you for Wayne. 
We also praise you, Lord, for our church and the opportunity to reach more people for Christ. We thank you for people visiting. We pray that we could add more to your family and kingdom. So continue, Lord, to give us eyes outward to receive those who are lost and hurting and without family. Pray for Ann Black. Give you praises, Lord, for a good visit with her family. Thankful, Lord, for those good relationships. Pray that those would be strengthened so that we continue to pray for her daughter. And ask, Lord, that you watch over her. We lift up our missionaries tonight, Lord. These people who give up so much to sacrifice for the kingdom. So we pray for them and their families, for their work, for their kingdom impact. We lift up Andrew Tran and Kennedy and their baby. Chuck and Amy Barber and their children, Phil and Heather Enoch and their children, especially Emily. We're praying for them, for Jean and Amanda Brooks, thankful for their time here with their family in the States. Pray for Glenn and Shannon Garner, Lord. Continue prayers for their work, for John and Reagan Guffey and their family. Pray for Hare Kelly and his work and provisions there in Pennsylvania. For Pastor Andy and all those in Haiti, praying for their effectiveness and also their safety and their provision. Lynn Bradley, Lord. I'm thankful that many family members in the area now to spend time with Lynn. So we pray for this family time and pray for Lynn now. And for all of our missionaries, Lord, we lift them up to you today. We pray for our church, Lord, that you would continue to use us to be a lighthouse for those who are looking for hope and looking for family. We pray for our rejuvenation project, Lord, that the goal will be reached, that the work will be done, and again, that you would have the glory. We continue to lift up our many homebound assisted living members, asking God that you care for them and encourage them tonight. For the important things going on in our children and student ministries this summer, we especially pray for Vacation Bible School next week. I pray the Spirit would be strong, be with Paula and all those who are working to just handle all the logistics and challenges so that nothing will be hindered in sharing the gospel. And we pray, Lord, for our prayer walking club who are covering neighborhoods and homes in our area with prayer and asking for the Spirit to intercede. And I pray for our Upstate Backpack Blessings Ministry, again, that that can be used as a tool to reach others. For our academy, Lord, so many kids here during the summer for camp and other activities, and they're already preparing for another school year to start. Bless um, Lisa and all the teachers and staff members. And Lord, we pray for our men's ministry and the opportunities that we have there and our prayer ministry. Ask, Lord, that you continue to just drive our hearts back towards you. And again, to continue to be more aware and increase our efforts to reach those in need of our Savior. That's why we're here, to reach the lost, to encourage and help others grow stronger. Lord, we also know that it is our duty to pray for our country. So we pray for our president and our Congress and our leaders. We pray for Brother Terry Merritt as he is feeling the call to run for mayor again. Lord, I just pray that you would bless him and Diane as they follow your lead and pray that you'd bless them and that they, if elected, would be a blessing to others. We lift up our brothers and sisters in Israel and the Ukraine and those in conflict around the world, praying for an end to war and strife. God, we thank you again for hearing our prayers, for being a loving God who is near to us in our time of need. We praise you tonight and trust you in all things, and we do this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming. Thanks for watching with us online. We hope that you'll join us Sunday. We're beginning a new series in our sermon series, and it's called Amazing Faith. We'll be looking at the lives of some people in the scriptures who made and did things in ways that amazed God, and their faith was proclaimed even still now. So we hope that you'll join us for that and come back and join us next week as we continue in our study in Psalms. Have a great, great week, everybody, and we'll see you Sunday. presentation of Malden First Baptist Church, Malden, South Carolina.